Welcome back. Agent Zero has received a fresh new update version 091, which contains some great improvements both under the hood as well as on the surface. As always, Agent Zero is completely free and open source. You can use it for whatever you want, however you want. Visit our website agent-zero.ai if you want to learn more about the project, its goal and its features. And we also have a community platform here where you can submit improvement proposals or upload others. We also have an active community on Discord and other socials, so be sure to join and subscribe. Let's start by the most noticeable change, which is the UI. There's quite a few updates here. So this is how Agent Zero looked in the previous version. These are the message bubbles you're used to. Blue bubbles for the LLM generating thoughts and instructions for tool calling, and then various messages representing tool call results, like here, the code execution tool is a terminal output of that tool. And this is how Agent Zero looks and feels now. As you can see, it's still the same style, but with more focus on relevant information, and it's overall much more comprehensible and feels much smoother. Messages are now organized into groups, so you can see the tool call result, and you can see the LLM message that triggered it. Every message is now collapsible. Some of them are collapsed by default, like the LLM message, but the information is still there. You can expand the message and see the full output generated by the large language model, including the original JSON. If you collapse or expand a message bubble, it is automatically applied to all bubbles of the same type. So you don't need to open and close individual bubbles. If you're not interested in large language model responses, for example, you can collapse all of them at once. With expanded messages, you can select whether you want to show them in full height or in limited height and scrollable. This is, for example, very useful for the code execution tool where the output can be very long. And because the agent now does a much better job at informing you throughout the process what is currently going on, you can probably collapse most of the messages and focus on the important stuff. And because the new UI is much more space efficient, it looks much better on mobile. This is, for example, simulated on an iPhone. Also, tables, images, and large code blocks are now rendered and scrolled in a much more useful way. And even though I still use the same large language model and the task itself takes exactly the same time as before, I have to say it feels a lot faster. It feels more responsive because I get to relevant information much faster and I can see what's going on at any time without being cluttered by a lot of unnecessary output. Here we are, for example, installing a MySQL database and testing it with a sample prompt. You've probably noticed the code execution tool output has been improved as well. It now looks more like a terminal. It shows the original command at the start, then the terminal output, and at the top in the heading, it shows the session number if the agent uses multiple terminals, and it shows the last line of the output as the window heading. So that's the UI. I'm sure you will enjoy these improvements. The other big update is under the hood, and that is the use of Light LLM. Light LLM is a great open source project that allows developers to use a single API interface internally to call any LLM provider. Meaning we can now call providers like Anthropic or Google just like they were an OpenAI compatible endpoint. Light LLM supports and unifies a ton of AI providers out of the box. In this version, we didn't extend our list of supported providers. We focused on replacing LangChain completely with Light LLM and making everything work. But obviously, Light LLM opens a ton of doors for future releases, and we are already working on a new customization system for model providers. So in the next releases, you can look forward to having a much broader list of AI providers. One thing we did change in this version regarding the model selection is the addition of API-based URL field because that is now also unified by Light LLM for all the providers. For most providers, you don't need to set anything in this field. They have their own endpoints. But for example, for OpenAI on Azure or for locally running models like uh, on Olama or in LM Studio, you will probably want to set uh, your API base URL. Or of course, you can still set it in the 
additional model parameters just like before, including any other additional parameters your model might require. And thanks to LightLLM, we finally have a unified interface for handling reasoning tokens, so we can fully support reasoning models like DeepSeek R1. Previously, you would have to wait for the final output without seeing re the reasoning. Now, if I ask what's the meaning of life, I can actually see the model doing its reasoning and then the chain of thought phase. And I can also see the full reasoning output. One last change in the model selection is for new users. When you first install Agent Zero, Open Router is now selected as the default provider instead of OpenAI. We don't have any sponsoring or anything, it's just that Open Router is a much more flexible platform. You are not limited to OpenAI models. On Open Router, you can find models from basically any provider. And open source models on Open Router are usually provided by multiple providers, so it automatically selects the best speed and price for you. This change to the default selection doesn't really mean much. Uh, you can still change it to whatever you want, and we are still using OpenAI models by default, just served through OpenRouter. But I thought uh, it's a better idea to incentivize new users to use something more flexible than uh, being vendor locked to a single provider. There is also a lot of free models on OpenRouter you can play with, but here you can expect some limitations. And one more update of this release, we now support streamable HTTP MCP servers. So that's it for today's updates. As always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your subscription. Thank you for your GitHub stars. Thank you for posting improvement proposals on our community platform. And thank you for being part of our community in general. See you next time.